I'm Sean. I'm product owner for Revman at Cochrane, um, which means that I'm always looking for feedback on the Revman side of things, how Revman could be improved to better support you. So I put my email on the slide there, so do feel free to get in touch. First of all, I'm going to be giving a brief introduction to study-centric data, what we mean by that, the associated workflows, and the data package that study data sits within. And that hopefully will help to put the demo that will follow into context. First though, we'd really love to understand the experience of everyone out there in the audience. So Dario, if you wouldn't mind starting our poll, and um, we'd love to know, have you imported study data into Revman before? And within that, we'd love to know whether that data came from Covidence or from a different source. Really, it looks like we've got lots of good responses there. Uh, and yeah, it looks like we've got lots of people here who have never imported data before, which is brilliant. Um, we can walk you through that in this session. So I will close this. Okay. So I want to start with a quick definition. So study-centric data management. This might be old news to, to many people on this call, but before I start throwing around the term study-centric data, I do want to ensure that everyone is familiar with it. So at its core, study-centric data management is an approach to managing study data where the study data is held within studies that can exist independently of analyses. That's the big change here from previous versions of Revman where the study data was held within a specific analysis. Often when we're discussing study-centric data, it feels like a broader concept because of the wide range of benefits that are brought about by working in this way. For example, you can predefine your analyses in RevMet at the protocol stage when you work in a study-centric data way. So you can define those analyses before you've extracted data, ultimately working in a more systematic way. Your study data can be reused in multiple analyses without having to go through the pain of repopulating the data for each analysis. And then one of the big focuses on this of this session is the ability to easily transfer large study data sets into Revman. So let's examine what working in this way might look like in practice. This diagram shows how, oh, sorry. This diagram shows how study-centric data might change a typical review development workflow, focusing on study data and analysis. So we've broken it into three sections, planning the analysis, preparing for the analysis by extracting data, and then populating that data into Revman so that your predefined analysis uh, are populated and appear instantly. The brown squares are steps that have been eliminated when you work in a study-centric data way. So you see there's lots of manual work eliminated at the populate stage. And then there's some green squares that show new tasks that must be performed when working in this way. And later, Julie will show how um, review criteria can be set up at the plan stage, and then data can be populated. So we'll come on to that very shortly, but first I just want to revisit this fourth benefit of study-centric data that I skipped over earlier. We know that publishing data openly increases the impact of research. And working in this way lets you share your study data in a non-proprietary format so that it can, it can be used elsewhere. So the study's data formats you will later see being used to transfer data between Covidence and Revman are, is also published with reviews on the Cochrane Library as part of a larger standardized data package. The aim of having this data package is to empower as many people as possible to use the data, take it into whatever tool is available to them 
or explore the data in ready, readily available tools such as Excel. We are seeking input from the evidence synthesis community on how the value of this data package can be maximized. So we would love it if you could, as we go through the demo, have a think about some of these questions in the context of your own circumstances and workflows and send myself or Gert any feedback you might have on this data package.